people. But now, those that are unbelieving, those that don't want to receive God, those that's walking away from God, those that's shining in God, those that's talking about us, worshiping and believing in God. Let me give you seven reasons why God has seven. It's because of his personification. Personification is the attribution of a personal nature or human characteristic to something non-human or the representation of an abstract quality and human form. So God is not like man nor is human to do the things we do. Not going to think how we think. He's not going to worry. He's never scared. See, we get scared. Truth be told, we get scared. We may act like we don't get scared, but we get scared sometimes. We we get a little shaky. We get nervous. We we ready to push the panic button. But God said He doesn't have that spirit of fear, and He tells us over and again for us not to have that spirit of fear. He's not like the creation because He's the Creator. He's more than anything. He, he can do all things. He, he's our all in all. He's our everything. Look at Numbers 23 and 19. And 23 and 19, it reads that God is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So he's letting us know even here that he is nothing like man. He don't have to make no prizes. He don't have to do this. He don't have to do that. He don't have to think about nothing. He is all-knowing. His personification let us know that God has so much more because he's above what he's created. Secondly, because of his promises, God has more. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, for all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him a man. Unto the glory of God by us. So to promise is to pledge. Amen is the seal to the deal. When we say amen, that's just like saying it's a sure thing. It's fixed. Nothing to be said after. Don't say nothing else after your amen. Don't go back to it. It is done. It will come to pass. God has committed to us, but we can't stay committed to him. God is still faithful to a faithless world. Stop looking at the prices and look at what the Lord has already promised. See, some of us promise for one another, but when God said, my promises are always good, my, my promises are always sure, mind me, you ain't got to wonder about a thing. See, I don't have to worry about a man kill promise when I got a God-fearing promise from the Lord. See, God promises God-fearing. That means you got to watch out. God is just going to blow us up. God promised Abraham a son, and he got it no matter how long it took. The reformation of the earth to cast away evil and to save what was left of humanity. So he flooded the earth to purge out some things, to get rid of the unnecessary, to get rid of the evil. And don't you know God can do it all over again? Progression. God has more. We're looking for a recession when God is the progression. Progression is the process of developing and moving forward. God continues to provide. God continues to be our everyday sequence. He moves in sequences. He moves every day. He doesn't stop. He is to be continued. We often see something that says it's going to be discontinued, but God is never a discontinued God. He is continued regardless of what's going on. God wants us to excel and progress, not excel and pay. Isaiah 54 and 17 said, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is my heritage of the service of the Lord and their righteousness of me, says the Lord. So we got a heritage, whether it's from me, whether it's from your seed, whether it's from your seed, seed whether it's from your children, children, there is something already set for us in God. He said, no weapon was formed. It is done. It is finished. It is so. No matter if I take it, my child take it. If my child will take it, my child, my children, children will take it. Whoever in the bloodline will take it. Fourthly, because of his precepts, 
God has more. Precepts, precepts. Precepts of God is the general rules of behavior or a thought. God lays a path finding out. We're still trying to figure out God, but we can't really figure out God. Never can we figure out our creator. Never can we figure out our maker. Never can we figure out our Lord and Savior. We try to figure out one another all day long, but you would never figure out God. God can go this way and that way, keeping you whatever he wants to because he is God. Romans 11, 33 says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. So you be trying to figure out why God picked this person in your judgment and he knew it because he wants to. It's unsearchable. You can't investigate our God. You can't, you can't question God. You can't put him in an interview and try to figure out what he's trying to do because he is God. His ways are past finding out. All you got to do is take his ways. Just take his way. God is not in need. We are therefore his precepts, which is beyond what we can think or imagine. He has so much grace. He has so much mercy. So much love. So much compassion. He even has a lot of wrath. So it's like his ways are past finding out. David said in Psalm 119, 15, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy way. He let God know that I'm going to meditate on whatever you decide, God. I'm going to meditate on whatever you want to do. And then I'm going to always respect your way. Simply because of his power, God has more. First Corinthians 4 and 20 says, the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. He decides. He turned the heart of the king. He turned the heart of the judge. He turned the heart of the accuser. He turned the heart of the abuser. He turned the heart of a user. He turned the heart of a backbiter. He turned the heart of a hater. He turned the heart of a murderer. He's very powerful. He's strong in mind. You cannot play with God. We cannot play with God at all because of his power. He gives us the power. He is our plus. We have to connect to him. God has more. He has plans. He has so many plans. I often think of this song we used to sing that God has a plan for you. Yes, He does. And He has a plan. He has a master plan. He has a blueprint. He has it all taken care of. And there's nothing you can do about the plan of God. Because it is his plan, not yours. He has all the plans. I've had the plan to make sure A, B, and C is done. I finish school. I go to college. I get married. I have children. How many of you are actually winning at this point? Has anybody went in that order? You bad if you went in that order. No one went in that order. Jones. Jones. <laughs> You bad. <laughs> Praise God. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, about the peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Praise God. See, so that just raised just 1% out of all these people in here. So that lets you know the faith of God on her life. It was his plan. God intended plans for our lives that he has more for us. He has set us apart for himself. He's given the keys of life eternally to him. God has more for us to testify, more for us to keep believing, more for us to keep achieving. In the midst of trials and tribulations, while I'm looking at that part going up, God said, I'm still God, I still got you, you good, you gonna be all right. Don't read what they say. Don't believe the hype of the news. Don't believe all these false prophetic things. Just know I am God. Because God is the true prophecy of everything. Psalm 37, 25 says, I have been young and now I'm old, yet have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He said, You're on the righteous side. Why would I let you beg? Why would I let you go with that? Why would I let you? 
Believe upon his son to have what? 